Hey world, welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 13. How's everybody out there doing today? I'm not going live because I want to kind of stay focused on my template and my design of what I'm speaking about. And uh, today I want to share with you the mentality of judgment. You know, as leaders, when we're in a nonprofit organization, one thing that I've found is, aside from the financial end of it, the emotional processing and the way that we process our lives and how we're going to behave under certain circumstances make us our own leader style. You know, people can duplicate an idea but the passion of it runs from within the individual. This is why a lot of people can't fuel off of the same energy that someone else can fuel off of. They'll decline in energy. They'll lose their stamina because they're not equipped. They're not trained. They're not um, physically fit to do the things that others do. That's why it's so important in nonprofits to run off of your idea as a passion and not a copycat version, if you will. So when we're talking about judgment, when a person is judged for being who they are, what I want to be understood here is that that is bullying and invoking a person to believe something about what the other person assumes that they can put on them, that they can pressurize them to believe. Like, for instance, if you have a nonprofit and you're helping, you're doing a project that is uh, very, very vital to the community, and then your turnout doesn't go as well as planned. You may have some people that may laugh at you at that moment, but you're building your stamina. So as long as, see, there's a difference. There's levels of ingenuity that I'm beginning to see in the nonprofit sector. And that is that if a person does not support you, the goal is to be successful and continue to just be there, be open, be available to that one that you can service. If you can service one person, if one person walks through the door, you've been a success. And I've always heard that. Even when I was a a diversion officer with the police department, I was like in my twenties. And they told me, if you help one child, no matter how many children are on your roster, You have 24 to 25 in the caseload. You are successful and you should present yourself in that area or that aura of success if you just help one. And I do remember helping more than one. And see, I think that in the nonprofit world, when you deal with different personalities and different niches of people and how they see their own community, It is not a reflection of a person with the passion to do what the Most High has equipped them to do. So they are showing up and that's all. That's all they need to do. The success is already created. It's already manifested. The energy has already been served. So the community has been helped. Whether one person or a hundred people involve themselves in the situation. And that's what I've learned as a nonprofit. I've also learned that the judgment of other people, of them invoking upon me the idea of how they would do it has nothing to do with the way that I do it. I do it with my own passion, as everyone should. Like I said, you can have five vendor sales And each and every one of those vendor cells will produce a different, unique passion. Because the individual who's 
on the other side of that table creating the success. They see their value. They see their, their fruition. They see all that coming together. So it is vitally important when running a nonprofit to make sure that your goals are achievable and making sure that you're not being judged by even your own self, because there are times that we can be our worst critic. And I've learned how not to do that. I've healed in the momentum of growth in my nonprofit, where I can say that as long as I show up, I've done my part. And the healing of a community is not based on how many people walk through my door. When my programming is happening, the availability, the presentation, the style, the uniqueness, you know, because if you can go right down the street and get the same thing I have, then yeah, that's duplication of service and it's not needed. But it's not that, not in my community, because I know exactly everything that I do is unique and not a lot of people are doing it. Why? Because I've observed, I've seen, and believe me you, if they were doing it, they would have been saying they, they were doing it. Because after I create a project of sort, I see things happening that shows that, that I have inspired. You know, one thing about a hater, and this is what an uh, advisor of mine told me, a hater loves you more than those who say they love you because a hater watches every move you make, but they don't want to give you accolade and credit. They want to bite off of that, but it's okay to bite off of that. Why is it okay to bite off of that? Because you're not going to do it the exact way that I'm going to do it anyway. So that's where creativity is niched. And if we would stop looking at other people and work towards connecting with them and being a part of what it is they do by showing up, by sharing, by caring. You know, it's not anyone else's job to advertise my Facebook page. Nobody's job, only mine. So I have to do the things that I do. I have to get out here and network and advertise. And now I'm bringing my niche of over 3,000 subscribers from my YouTube channel, and I'm inviting them to my local community. So not only the people in my community will be serviced, now I'm saying I can get someone from California to come down and have a birthday party and kick it and have fun in a different location, bring their family, bring their crew, bring, you know, road trip, let's go or another state, and enjoy the venue, enjoy the process, enjoy the growth of looking at where I'm coming from. Come to my community center. Come and see what the Youngstown Community Center has to offer through its programming. And it's not just my community center. No, I'm not that shallow. It is ours. And anyone with a unique perspective that can bring money, that can bring income, that can bring, you know, programming for a community, that's where my heart is at. Shout out to my warriors, Olympia and Shirley, for coming through today and really manifesting and helping to remove the barriers and blockages of things that may have been stifling but it's no longer a hold on the success. And I'm so grateful to you. I honor you. I thank everyone who came out to the first April community birthday party. It was phenomenal. We had some wonderful people come through. We had some wonderful people share. Some people didn't want to be on the, on the Facebook page because of, you know, their careers, because of things that they do, and they just didn't want to be on. 
too many people do too many things, too, too crazy to, these days. So they chose not to be on, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful to my Dollar General staff, family, you know, uh, my Dollar General crew that help with my staff that, you know, connects us to so much. Um, so as a nonprofit, that judgment among people are being invoked. So let me tell you, when, you know, when people do judge you and you're a nonprofit, what you need to do is realize this, they're not where you are. So that judgment means nothing because the more that we find success in what we do, by the time we look back at what has been said, it's all said and done. It's over. It's null and void. Let me tell you, the energy of defeat started earlier today with the energy of extreme rain. I mean, it was raining so extreme until it, it just didn't even look productive. <laughs> it didn't even look like it was just watering the, the showers of April to bring May flowers. It looked like it was like a man-made, I'm going to turn on some, you know, pollutants in the air and I'm just going to let it rain down. But the spiritual essence of rain on a successful project, on a project, equals success. And that's what I realized in my nonprofit. So no weapons, the weapons that were set up for me to give up meant nothing to me. I kept going. And that right there is mind over matter. And these are things that we can truly do when we realize we are not dealing with low vibrational beings or deities that are here because they know our weakness. They know our emotional struggles. They know our strengths. They know our weaknesses. In the nonprofit world, we also have to learn to be consistent in the struggles of what we can and cannot deal with. You know, um, I'm going to tell you right now, that judgment of others saying to me or making me feel inferior or not wanting to be a part of the equation is going to be the very thing that brings them to me. It's just like going out fishing. All I got to do is put the bait in the water and keep doing what I'm doing. And eventually all the fish will show up. See, people who do not appreciate you will never understand what it took for you to do what you do on a regular basis. I'm going to say that again because I said something very profound there. People who do not appreciate you will never understand what it takes for you to do what you do on a regular basis. See, and that's the thing. I've learned that. I've learned that to heal myself and to go within is a very powerful tool for me to establish my success, to establish not, not a competition, because I'm in a class by myself. And as a nonprofit, when you create your passion and your goal where you're willing to do this thing for free and still maintain your livelihood, guess what I find? I find that there is so much more for me that would otherwise not be there. People, let me tell you, People who do not appreciate you will never understand what it took to do what you do on a regular basis. So why should they, why should they matter? I was told by my higher advisors to keep moving forward, to keep moving. And before I know it, where one door is closed, be grateful because that was just an elevation to a higher level to make me even greater than if I had of received the help from the level in which told me no. I see it clearly. I see the forces and the energy that moves through people. And as a nonprofit entity, you need to know. It's just like playing chess. You're not playing checkers. You're playing chess. 
you see, and you have to always be steps, steps, steps ahead, not competitively. See, that's the key. Not competitively. I never compete with another person. If I see something, you know, I've been the type that when I wanted a vehicle, I wanted something that was not popular. Because if something went on, something went down, if you got 150 people riding in the same inner city area, community on one side of town with the same vehicle, I remember the 300 M's, I wanted one so bad. But then I said, oh, I can't get that because there's one every corner. There's a yellow one, there's a lemon one, there's an orange one, there's a green one, there's a blue one. I could not get it. I couldn't get it. Because there's nothing. <laughs> and there was no competition. It was just that I didn't want to be the same as everybody on every corner. And I look at vehicles just like energy. When you have these, every corner, there's another vibration of the same energy. It traps you in. It puts you in a mindset that judgment is being invoked upon you, meaning this is what you better drive. Because if you ain't driving this, then you're not that. Okay, I get that. But being unique, let me see a Maserati <laughs> up in my spot somewhere. That's going to be impressive. That's going to be unique. That's going to be profound to me. You know, let me see something that is unique and different. Let me see a Genesis. You know, let me see that vehicle that, you know, I want for me. That one. That one that's already been manifested. That's where I think people need to learn why things happen in their lives the way that they do and why people can learn to appreciate you. See, once everybody else starts paying attention, now everybody wants to appreciate you. But that's false. That's fake. That's not real. That is egoic. That is non, I don't know what it is. But if you can rock and roll with me when I'm down and you're rising with me and you're elevating with me, you have far more respect in my eye than you would ever have if you were a million dollar person. If you were a billion dollar person, if you knew how to get trillions of dollars, you would not impress me if this is the way that you roll just because. And these are things that I hold dear and I teach in my business development courses. When I teach to my online course class, when I teach my business associates within my local community center, when I speak developmentally, because you have to develop in business. You can't just come to the top. That's just like building a house, putting a roof on empty space. <laughs> the roof may look good, but just with four beams, one north, one south, one east, one west, how are you going to cover yourself in the home? You got to build the walls. You got to build the structure. You got to build the foundation. You got to make that solid. You got to make that, you know, something that is going to sustain. Because other than that, everything is going to fall and topple right on your head. So you cannot go to the very top just because there is an LLC involved or a nonprofit um, uh, um Identi uh, entity number involved, or you have a SAMS a membership, or a, a, um, a SAMS entity membership, or a DUNS number, or a business portfolio that you can snag for $5, they can put it, everything about your business inside of a, of a, um, 
pack it that makes it look like it's a million dollar business. But do you have what it takes to follow every one of those guidelines that's in that portfolio? That's what nonprofit work is about. Making sure that you realize that you understand there's no competition within yourself. And that's what I've had to learn because I've never been, been so busy looking at someone else's achievements. I've always been busy looking at my own growth and my own achievements. And that's something that you need to do in a nonprofit world. Yes, you can take some ideas. You can take some concepts. You can take some situations and you can try to blend them in. But you should be the structural foundation of your building and you should be the roof and the foundation of your support. When we can do this, ladies and gentlemen, we know that people will become appreciative to what we do because now they understand what it took for it to get there in order for us to do what we do on a regular basis. Again, people will then appreciate us for understanding because they saw that it wasn't an overnight situation. They saw that it was developed over time. What it took to do what we did on a regular basis. And then we get empowered. Then we get motivated. Then people start to not just watch us. So the haters make us great. And they've always said that. And I never understood what it meant. Until now, haters are more inspired by us than anyone, than even the ones that love us the most. They love us more than them because they're watching every step we make. And it's a great thing. So Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 13, again, is about judging and making sure that we're not being invoked to be judged by someone who wants to narcissistically become us or move us out the way in order to produce what we've already started. Okay. So we need to be on point and we need to be generally understanding to ourselves. And we also need to be very healing and very um, accepting to the fact that we do not need to compete with anyone because we are the one. We are the one. And when you are the one, others try to be that one. So what you have to do is learn to safeguard your energy, learn to be grateful with the success, even if it's just one person that comes into your nonprofit. You know, I sat back and I thought about my mom when she was the first lady of the Church of God in Christ um, on the east side of Youngstown, Ohio, when I was growing up. And one thing she said, if one person walks into my sanctuary, if one person gets the healing process that is needed. That is one less person that I have to worry about that would try to rob me, to hurt me, to want to be me and to try to out me. Okay. Because I've given them an opportunity to do it for themselves. And sometimes ignorance is just all it is. They just don't know how to begin a process. They don't know how to start believing in who they are. So we have to learn to hope, give hope and to heal ourselves so that others would know that this is how you come. You know, it's kind of like someone coming asking for help and they know they need the help. They know that they need the help. But instead of saying, I need the help, they're looking at it from an egoic standpoint. Someone told me, and many of you already know that I'm a felon. I'm a, um, a felon. Ex, you know, ex felon, um, who served time and in incarceration. Someone told me I still had the mentality of the incarcerated mindset. Well, see, when you've been conditioned like to be in that arena of thought, yeah, you do watch your back. You know that someone can easily stab you with no questions asked. You know, um, someone can be ahead of you and they're paranoid because they're watching everything. But in society, there's a different type of incarceration. It's a society driven of narcissistic individuals who assume that they're going to do the right thing. You're assuming that these people are going to do the right thing. Why? Because we're living in a free society. 
But you have to understand there's more cutthroats within the community in which we live. That's why the incarcerated um, prison system is so overwhelmingly extreme, okay, until we have to be more mindful and more careful in the free industry of what is known as capitalism, okay? So when you tell that devil that I know who you are and you already expect that person to be the devil himself in the big red burning fire surrounding him like a a burning hula hoop with gasoline around it, they cannot come and conjure up anything. You don't give them the opportunity. You don't give them the space. You don't give them the opportunity to bring you down. And these are the differences between those people in business that have the eyes open, ears open, awareness of consciousness that goes exceedingly beyond the norm of individuals. So that way you can be smart enough to discern based on intuition. And that's something that no one who studies you know how much of it you have. And these are the reasons why I can feel the wind change when someone comes to me in a negative vibration. The wind will change. The sound of things will show up, like the just just the the blow of the horn right there. Just to give you an example. If I'm in the middle of a thought and all of a sudden something comes to me and says, stop, and it's very bright, and I see a visual red stop sign, I'm going to stop because there's something there. But I will not stop for man. No. This is a spiritual connection that you must have as a nonprofit uh, person who is dealing with community because community comes as they are. Just like church, you don't know who's coming. So you got to be prepared to put your defenses and wear your armor and don't take it off. Don't take off the armor. Even if you 50 steps ahead, you keep your armor on because you may have to slay the demon's throat in the spiritual realm. So you need to know this. You need to empower yourself with this because people are not always coming as clear and as pure as the light of day. They're coming demonically. They're coming to take over. They have that takeover spirit. And that is what I refuse to allow in my life because I've come too damn far. And there ain't a devil in the world that can try to come back and take what they've already tried to take and it still didn't work. Whether it's 2003, whether it's 2006, whether it's 2011, I go back to my history. Not to stay there, not to dwell there, not to become depressed there, but to empower myself to know that my source had my back the whole time. And the journey and the, and the struggle was real back then. So... Yeah. So I just want to empower the person who's thinking about starting something that their grandmother left them, their mother left them, their father left them, but they want to do it with their own spin on it. Take these words and you meditate both night and day. And if you need me, you know, I got you. I'm here. I just want to thank everyone for being a part of this. I saw my new subscribers. I salute you. I thank you. I thank every one of my people who donate to my YouTube channel as well as my cash app. Thank you so very much. I don't even have to really say it because those who do sponsor, they will find out how to get that to me. And everything comes in due time in decent order. So I really appreciate and thank you. Thank you for being part of the Chronicles of a Nonprofit episode uh, podcast. This is episode 13. So take it as it resonates. And as always, thank you so much. 
and stay consistent. Bye.